I am Jim Collison, and this is Gallup's Call to Coach, recorded on April 18th, 2023. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you're listening live and you don't see the chat room, there's a link to it right above me there. It'll take you to YouTube. You can use the YouTube chat or stay right there if you want. That's fine. Uh, if you have questions after the fact, you can always send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app or right there on YouTube so you never miss an episode. Depan Jan Deb is our host today. Didi, as we like to call him, is our market leader for Gallup and is located in our India office. His top five are context, individualization, learner, strategic, and achiever. And Didi, always great to be with you. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, very good evening to you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to do uh, all these uh, interactive sessions with very special people. You know, this is our second edition in 2023 in India. And I'm really thrilled to be back <clears throat> along with you because this edition is special because we have someone very, very senior from the fraternity uh, with us. So good morning, Manoj. Welcome to the show. Before I you know, let you ask a few questions, uh, I'll take the honor and privilege to introduce Mr. Manoj, Kumar, Mr. Manoj Sharma, who is the President, as well as the Chief Human Resource Officer of Arte Industries Limited, an advocate of human capitalization in the work ecosystem by vision, and, and a huge people leader and a reputed leader in a, across the country. Manoj's experience across different geographies, as well as his dynamic leadership, uh, is one of the most important facets that define him as a leader. He's a member of many organizations like including the federation of indian chambers of uh, commerce and industry he was awarded the economic times award in the category of hr leader of the year in 2021 amongst the large-scale organizations manoj it's been a pleasure and privilege to know you for the last three years and welcome to gallup's call to coach for 2023. many thanks uh, didi and uh, thanks jim for hosting me so manoj my first question to you is you know you have had so rich experience across so many different geographies, you know, different organizations. If you could tell us a little bit about your experience uh, and, and how it had shaped you, uh, you know, being the leader that you are today. Ah, great. Thanks, Didi. I think uh, my journey started as a learner and I'm still continuing as a learner. And uh, so that is one thing which has remained common. Early in the uh, career stage, I actually, I picked up what is needed to be relevant in the domain. And uh, that has really helped me. And I got to really got to work with fantastic set of leaders early in my life. And actually throughout my good uh, career for at least for a decade and a half, uh, very good people came in my life as my manager or colleagues. So that that has really helped me to grow in life and uh, whatever I am today, I think the major uh, uh, contributors are them and the team members whom I got to work. And I, I really take pride uh, today when I look back, I notice at least 12 of my team members are leading the HR function in various companies. And that is a great satisfaction. They've been part of my team and uh, that, that that gives me a goosebump in terms of uh, contributing back and also learning from them uh, from the point of view of their dynamic leadership. As far as my you know uh, experience goes, I think I have always taken a, a kind of a risk uh, with myself or experimented myself quite a lot. You know, uh, every three to four years there has been a role change. Uh, not the organization change, but the role change. And uh, I, I am a firm believer of being at one place and really leverage that place fully. So I started with my journey with Aditya Group. It lasted for 19 years. 
but in 19 years i must have done eight different roles and uh, at an interval of three to four years so that has really rounded me up uh, to a great extent and gave me an opportunity to work with very tall leaders across the globe first time then i after 19 years i took the first break and i joined uh, vedanta resources uh, with very very you know under the dynamic leadership of agarwals and got to learn uh, the metal and mining business uh, as a very dynamic uh, you know uh, business the way they were running the commodity business and it was actually you know uh, coming out of my comfort zone and accepting things which are which were uh, really not part of uh, my thought process or maybe my blind spots and uh, i could actually venture into them and uh, and put in my best efforts uh, to really pick up a uh, lot many things from the entrepreneurial uh, uh, point of view or the values which vedanta uh, was advocating then i took a bigger courage you know in my life and i went to africa in a place called Lubumbashi, which is in Democratic Republic of Congo, where I was the chief human resource officer for a metal and mining company. And uh, very, very, again, promising company. They, they are the largest producer of cobalt. And cobalt today is one of the most uh, prestigious metal, especially for the electro, you know, from for the batteries point of view. And they were the largest producer of cobalt in the world. And having worked there, seeing the fourth world so closely and managed diverse set of uh, individuals uh, was, was really, really eye-opening for me. And uh, uh, I had to come back because of my family reasons and parental reasons. And But I had a great time. I mean, whatever perception people have about Africa, or I heard about Africa is really, really changed when I was there. It is such a beautiful continent, very beautiful people and extremely loving, uh, you know, environment. And if you remain uh, authentic to them and simple to them, they, they, they just been there for you. And uh, so it was a very, very, I would say, enriching experience of seeing the fourth world and and the various nuances around that. Then uh, I came back to India and joined Arthi Industries almost four and a half years back. And when I started my journey here, I think uh, somewhere in my thought process, this is the place where I, I can experiment with all my experience of last 23, 24 years. And as a result, I think uh, my promoters or my founders uh, trusted in me and gave me a uh, complete autonomy to set up the HR function uh, to make the organization future ready. And uh, the narrative was very powerful and it still remains very powerful. And the kind of work uh, I got to do in last four years was phenomenal. And uh, uh, I am really, really pleased you know, certain things which we do, even Gallup played a very significant role in terms of building up our employee engagement framework. And uh, uh, during the pandemic, post pandemic, I think uh, people are in in a best state of mind, actually. So uh, that's that's what briefly I can say, Didi, you know, the experience and uh, I'm really privileged to work with uh, diverse communities uh, in my life and very Thank very tall so yeah yeah it's a very very you know detailed as well as uh interesting you know information that you shared because you know your experience with so many different cultures shapes up the way you actually deal with people from diverse backgrounds in india now you know working working at, at rt industries we'll speak we'll speak of course in detail about you know uh, your uh, uh, insights on 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 the importance of engagement culture and strengths but before we we go deep there you know as is the norm for us we we, we start with, with the strengths finder and I, I know that 
you got exposed to the Gallup strength philosophy way back before we launched this show also, right? So uh, if you can tell us a little bit about your journey with the Strengths Finder as an individual, you know, you know um, and, and, and how it, it, you know, helped you, you know, what was your reaction when you saw the report? I think uh, uh, by, by qualification, you know, uh, I did one of my postgrad in psychology with a specialization in organizational behavior. And uh, then after that, I did my management. Uh, I don't know. I mean, positive psychology has always uh, been uh, very core to me. Very, you know, I, I, I really, you know, wanted to my PhD in the positive psychology. And the first book which I read, first break, all the rules, you know, uh, where the Gallup has played a, you know, a significant role. And then when I got exposed to the framework of Gallup in 97, I, I actually moved quite a lot uh, the, with the whole framework of Gallup and the way the Gallup is shaping up the organization for future success. And then in 2004, I actually, you know, I took my first strength finder and uh, when I look back uh, almost now close to 20 years, uh, Didi, uh, yeah. and I shared my report with uh, almost uh, 20 to 25 my, of my significant uh, colleagues here in Arthi. And I said, this is a 20 years uh, back report. And today the whole report is still remained relevant. And that, uh, and many of them have said, Ki, you are exactly like this. And, uh, you know, what you were, you know, underlying mindset about 20 years back. So uh, I think that that has been a, uh, I would say, a blessing uh, to me in towards uh, continuing my momentum the way I was uh, built up uh, and uh, just uh, harnessing the, that further, all the strength, that, whether it is strategic thinker or activator or you know positive uh, thinker or listener etc so i feel it's a great tool and uh, it's a it, it can really set the momentum for you uh, for the future success and i truly believe in that and uh, the, the the pudding lies in uh, you know sharing it with your team members sharing it with your significant others when you do that, actually, you know, you broaden the circle of success. And when you broaden the circle of success, I think uh, there is a lot of shaping takes place. And uh, and uh, and that is how it happened uh, with me. And it remains one of the most uh, important report for me. And, uh, uh, and, and I, I take a lot of, I would say, uh, insight and foresight and uh, excitement and energy when I see that. Wonderful. And, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that really I want to, you know, share with the viewers as well is that, you know, one question that we always receive from a lot of people <clears throat> who have taken the assessment, excuse me, <clears throat> is that should we again retake the assessment? Now, what we say is that unless you go through a life changing situation, you should not retake it. Now, yours is a prime example. You took it almost two decades back, right? Uh, you have, you've gone through so many different roles in so many different geographies. And yet, when you show your report to people now in your organization, they feel that you are this person. You are a mirror image of who this report is, right? So, you know, that is something very, very reassuring because we advise people not to retake the assessment because human behavior doesn't change unless you go through, you know, any life changing situation. Because this is a very, very interesting and, you know, insightful information you shared, you know, Manoj, because when people after 20 years can relate to the fact, you know, this is who you are as an individual, you know, you know, uh, the probability that you will have the same top five as, you know, someone else is one in 33 million, right? And yes. your top five, uh, you know, you, it starts with you know self assurance. You know you have activator, you have strategic, you have maximizer, and you have communication, right? So that's great to hear. Before I move on to the next you know set of questions, Jim, um, any any first thoughts from your end? Um, you know after listening listening to Manoj. No, I like I like where you guys are going. Let's just let's just keep the momentum going there. 
Dini. Okay, perfect. So, <clears throat> Manoj, I'll start with something that you you you, you talked about. You know, uh, we have been working with you, you know, RT Industries for almost three years now, and we've done some significant work in the employee engagement space where you know we've seen a lot of changes that has been you know successfully implemented in your organization. So, what I will start. Where I would like to start is that, uh, what was your, what is your, you know, first thought about seeing the work done on the engagement front in 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 art industries, and how did it eventually help you take some important business related decisions? Very great question. I think we are building uh, Arti uh, <clears throat> for the future, and. Uh, and when we see it's a it's a close to a, a four decade old company but it remains very very hungry from the future uh, success point of view and we are building arti uh, for for next i guess for next good amount of 100 years and so uh, and lot of investment is happening towards culture building and when i because Culture eats strategy in the breakfast, so, <laughs> and that is where the whole success. Everyone in Arthi is exposed to a uh, you know culture building uh, related workshops, and uh, we initiated that journey about five years back, and we are continuing that journey. There are close to 120 days of culture building work, and the insights which are coming out from the engagement surveys which we are taking every year, last three years, has been very, very powerful, I would say, a provider of data and information in which direction we should do and which areas to really work upon. And I'm really happy to share some of the powerful decisions which we have taken, basis our reports and finding is, uh, is something like uh, we are advocating is we are a hierarchy free organization you know uh, where you know things doesn't move as per uh, with the hierarchy people are you know at across all the levels everyone is leader so we have developed our own model we call it arthi engaging leader arthi engaging leader is one who lives arthi values of care integrity and excellence who operates in a natural state of action, who works in alignment, who speaks and listens powerfully, who is a cause in the matter, and co-creates a world-class company. That's our own leadership model, and that is where the work has uh, happened quite a lot, where everyone is exposed to the, uh, you know, uh, the various nuances of this leadership model. And we are practicing it. And that is where the Gallup uh, insights, inputs coming out of our survey is very, very key. Because we see people are possibilities. You know, and we see people bring the change, whatever, you know, change which we are looking for. So we have series of transformation, uh, you know, since 2012 it is started. So this is third phase of transformation in this th third phase of transformation you know uh, we have chalked out our future for 23 to 27 for four years and we have given a you know uh, kind of a theme to this transformation as uh, shape the future be world class and around that we have identified four strategic areas one of the strategic area is people well-being and that is where you know the greater greater amount of uh, you know i would say insights will come from the gallup uh, assessments and various other uh, initiatives which gallup is working with us you know i recall about a year and half back we engaged with gallup on our creating a culture of recognition and appreciation. And when I see today, I think almost in all our, all our factories, all our plant locations, all our verticals, all our almost across 
the company the culture of recognition and appreciation is is visible is demonstrated by the leaders is demonstrated by their team members and it's, it's being talked about it's there in the conversation and and when i when we took the last engagement survey the score has significantly moved up you know to the extent of close to you know 0.4 which which is a significant momentum okay and we we fundamentally did you know some workshops uh, with gallup coaches and a lot of sensitization to our people managers i think that that journey has really really worked and so as we have again identified certain areas and uh, we are thinking you know gallup can bring bigger and uh, better insights you know on those areas you know we we are we are ready to invest further in our capabilities of our people managers and that is where you know some areas has been identified and will be working towards it mm-hmm. our engagement journey in 3 years you know it has moved significantly you know to, uh, the last survey the the engagement score has moved by 0.17 which is a significant jump on you know uh, as far as the you know uh, survey feedback is concerned and last two months we have been disseminating all the results the kind of vibes i am getting from people is is like you know giving me a at least threefold kind of an energy in terms of you know being with them and enabling them helping them and take it to the less, uh, next level mm. every one is becoming a owner and they are owning up the success of becoming a world class company so uh, super super you know very very powerful i would say energy is flowing across the company uh, the productivity levels are best there are the safety and sustainability very recently we you know we do a uh, sustainability study or a safety perception survey our outcome on safety perception survey from the extended com- you know members of the uh, indirect and direct both are close to 9000 people took the survey it's in the the uh, top quarter as far as the safety uh, perception survey is concerned and i feel this is possible when people are in a thriving mode people are you know free from their all threats people are productive people are you know not having any inhibitions to express themselves so that is that is what the culture uh, which we have been focusing arthi engaging leader is becoming a very pivotal uh, uh, thing and gallup is like uh, the outcome of gallup surveys are being used and being referred for various various other initiatives mm. so it's 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 like cutting across all okay. the levels thank you so much it was very very insightful as well as so much data centric you know uh, jim your thoughts yeah let me let me ask you manoj let me ask you this question you know that q4 question of uh, praise and recognition i've received praise or recognition in the last 7 days the important part of that question is for doing good work in 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 giving people meaningful things to do right having teams doing meaningful work how how are you encouraging that throughout the organization because it's hard sometimes to get that momentum of recognition going how yeah. what 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 kind of things are you guys doing to kind of not just keep the momentum but just get it going in some cases i think great question jim i think we have taken certain uh, i think we are impacting the whole ecosystem it's not in isolation so we have t- taken certain systemic me- measures wherein we have a digital uh, platform where reward and recognition is uh, you know very integral uh, or you know being used as a as a so it provides a very i would say very administrative ease for people to uh, you know uh, do their bit in terms of recognizing or appreciating their team members or peers etc so there is a digital pl- platform available second each leaders or or people managers they have their own way of uh, recognizing people we have a spot recognition kind of a you know framework and uh, that so that is that that is at play 
that is two number three is is where you know there are the hr tools or the hr business processes the integrity of hr business processes in arti is of one of the best i would say that and during those discussions suppose we have it we have a something called conversation or we have something called buddy buddy work each and every member in the in the white collar is part of the buddy in arti industries the integrity on buddy work is to the extent of 95 to 97 percent okay me every week the buddy talks to each other and you know share their learnings share their it it's 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 like you know freeing up people and it's keeping them in a natural state of action and that is where you know uh, the time devoted uh, by the people managers towards their team members is really helping recognition is not only just like you know uh giving promotions or uh, sending into the training programs or taking them for dinner or i mean though there are thousand and one ways of you know recognizing and appreciating people i think it it individual needs to have on their own novelty i tell you a case simple case one of my team member got married about two months back okay i had a heart to heart conversation with him uh, yesterday because it's a big event in his life how he is you know today after marriage is is he really enjoying being married and you know what what's what's the underlying mindset where is he you know so i think it is very very important to address both personal and professional aspects of it mm-hmm. and have a heart to heart relations you know support your people support is i feel support is a big way of creating a trust and feeling and, and and is being seen as a big big game changer or a, a recognition for the individual ki my manager is giving time to me and discussing all this you know things and sharing uh, one's experience so one one really needs to like i always say horses for the courses you cannot have copy paste approach for for everything you know you know you you need to see the need of the individual and create your own uh, avenues for recognizing and appreciating mm. and that is what is uh, happening in arte and i think everybody is having their own uh, i would say uncanny way of appreciating and recognizing their team members mm. and so that culture is visible and that culture is visible in energy and enthusiasm and uh, participation and involvement and like five days 100% of the people took the engagement survey in arthi that is like, huge I, did, i i did not pursue or follow with anyone hmm. 100% wow five days it happened that 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 is a bigger indication for me ki the state of you know mind uh, people are here and uh, i think uh, th- along with uh, recognition and reward i think many other things the whole ecosystem is working well you, you, we know when we line up expectations when we have the right materials and equipment we got people lined up in the right you know using their strengths yeah, yeah. and recognition is happening you mentioned a word earlier and i want to come back to it what do you think that recognition is doing for people's well-being like it is it having an effect that goes backwards and is affecting their well-being can you talk a little bit about that i think uh, uh, recognition does play a most important role in the people well-being whether it is physical well-being or a, you know career well-being or a financial well-being or a, you know spiritual well-being or mental well-being you know recognition is one thing and i am a very big advocate of that because if you enter in a office and somebody smiles and you say oh superb you are looking really good today i think that that makes your day you know you are in a different state you are in a different orbit i in terms of really demonstrating your leadership style for that particular day so i guess uh, if if you want your people to be in a thriving mode recognition is the only tool or appreciation is the only tool i mean we need to give those positive strokes 
in a manner ki that moves people and uh, you know that kind of compels them to give their best i think uh, th that that is what you know the conversation in uh, arti that is what we are trying to advocate as well and keeping it light uh, you know so like for example when i am coming uh, was coming to this session one of my team member came and gave me a thumbs up you know oh super i mean it created a different energy uh, you know in me so i feel you know uh, when you have uh, uh, colleagues like that or a culture like that a uh, uh, lot can be achieved and your well being is in the i would say one of the best state of thriving didi i'll put it back to you thank you so much i was you know uh, listening yeah very really. so manoj before i ask you a, the next question i actually have a very interesting thing to do uh, so my question is to jim okay jim how many years have you been with gallup 15 15 i have this is my 11th year i complete my 11th year in the next few, few days manoj has been with uh, in his first organization with the aditya birla group for 19 years you know and manoj during the course of his introduction mentioned something which was very i had noted down you know he mentioned values right and uh, you know when we do uh, engagement work with clients we also do something which is beyond our q12 which is which we call as cultural indexes and one of the cultural in the indexes at, that we measure at art industries is also values right so my that go that takes me to the, to the next question manoj in today's age of millennials and you know gen z's and everything how much has values contributed to the culture at rt industries and where do you foresee this in the next in the coming years we know that we work uh, we try to me measure and manage that through the questions that we ask but you know uh, values has remained an integral part of your your life and experience across yep. so many different places right and that helped you shape and i'm i'm sure uh, jim uh, the, the same follows through for you as well as it does for me so if people ask me that you know you have been with the same organization for 11 years you know values within gallup has something that has made me not think twice but to stay here so manoj your thoughts on the importance of values uh, you know especially in today's generation where we see you know i people, think uh... so much fickle yeah did he uh, when it comes to values uh, i am actually very fortunate to experience that, that kind of a value orientation in our industries you know every decision is value centric you know i am actually very fortunate when the pandemic you know started you know our values are care integrity and excellence my chairman and the significant you know other stakeholder vice chairman managing directors they clearly told me nobody would lose job on account of pandemic in our industries i tell you everything that gave me so much of courage so much of courage to remain and ensure there is a business continuity and sustain all our processes whether it is timely annual uh, com revisions bonus payouts promotions everything happened dot on time i see there was a blood bath in in the corporates you know globally you know salary cuts and all sorts of you know things happened but i'm i'm really really happy to share arthi is one such company we did not change anything and that gave me lot of courage because we took the decision keeping our values as source so all our decision making our source is our values so we you know care integrity and excellence there has been many many leading examples with respect to customers with respect to communities with respect to employee wellbeing i tell you during pandemic i happened to you know one of my colleague's spouse 
she was affected and she needed a you know lung transplant she was affected that bad i and company stood with that manager and his family and we ensured she get the best of the treatment and it happened she got we we ensured she got the lung transplant done and so because we we truly believe and demonstrate value of care when it comes to care i think we we don't everybody in the company is is like uh, you know, like taking exceptional steps in terms of helping or caring people and that you know many a times i have asked in my open discussions or town hall ki what is one thing which occurred to you mind when you think of arthi industries you know i think the first thing is ke values people are so so uh, i would say uh, thoughtful about it and they are experiencing it in in the decision making so values are actually you know providing us a lot of courage and uh, kind of you know enabling us to take very very powerful decisions for the business success and continuity uh, and uh, that and i would say that culture was existed before my joining and i am i am just enabling it or st- strengthening or taking it uh, further so the arthi industries was always a value centric company it will continue to remain a value centric company and that is that is a big blessing for us wonderful wonderful to hear uh, manoj because in these times where you know we, we see so much of variability in life you know uh, values is something that makes you stick to some you know stick to what you're doing and and make you believe in in what you're doing so it's it's lovely to hear and you know before i move on to the next question i must mention on air that you know jim can clarify this this has to be one of the most attended shows live across we've been doing this for so many years now jim this has to be you know and we thank everyone in the audience who, who have joined us and uh, in the last 10 minutes we'll take a few questions from you so if you have any questions for manoj please uh you know uh, write those in the comment section jim will you know um, help them you know ask 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 it back to manoj but uh, moving on to the next question manoj you know uh, we'll go back to one of our uh, you know tying philosophy of strengths and what happens when you know organization work or when we say that you creating a strengths based culture right one of the facets of that is that strengths is scientific self awareness and when people or say employees are aware of their potential especially when they are working with you know a group of people they work in harmony with interdependent teams this helps to reduce conflicts right for example if you know that you are say you are empathetic by nature the fact that you are empathetic in nature is something that you you have been doing that's what we call as the trait theory right but others to know that you are empathetic is also very important that is where you know strengths plays a very important role in you know team uh dynamics because each person recognizes why you know his or her peer group filters information in a certain way and this is where we say that the strengths interplays with engagement your thoughts on that you know uh because uh, you have been working bits and pieces to create a wonderful culture within the rt group and your thoughts on how strengths can play a role uh as you look into the future because it allows not only a scientific self awareness at an individual level but also allows you to work together and create a effort which is much bigger than this like a synergistic effort your thoughts got it that. got it <clears throat> so how i see it you know how strength can be uh, a game changer for your future success you know and uh, uh, when i look back you know uh, i have been a strong remained a very strong advocate of demonstrating your strength and whatever improvement areas or i call it barriers 
uh, in my success from the improvement point of view. Uh, yes, uh, they are also important to be aware of. But I feel if you demonstrate your uh, strength, uh, they can they can be you know uh, they will be a much more a weightage in the eyes of the people. They would you know people would leverage you more. When, when you truly believe in your strength and demonstrate at the workplace. And that has typically happened with me for a no, number of years. Uh, secondly, uh, I see uh, strength by nature reduces a lot of stress in you. Okay. And when you are stress-free, your discretionary effort goes up big time. And that is what I feel, you know, strength can uh, bring more uh, innovative uh, thoughts in people. They can make you, uh, strength can really make you stress-free or, you know, your well-being much, will be much, much more, I would say, uh, in a good shape, in a thriving, uh, you know, kind of a situation. And... Uh, it is important to be aware of your uh, imp improvement areas. And if those improvement areas are becoming barrier in your success, uh, good to be addressed uh, to them. Like, uh, for example, I tell you, uh, I, I was a poor listener. I was a poor listener. And uh, I consciously worked on that. And uh, today, with good authenticity i can say that i have improved quite a lot and it has really helped me to uh, you know take my strength further okay and so sometimes you know if if you have some derailer which which could be seen as a derailer and listening i feel for a hr or a people manager is a very very important uh, aspect uh, then you need to you have to address and uh, make it a part of your uh, leadership, uh, you know, trait or leadership style. And so, so you need to really examine. Sometimes you need uh, some surgery in the form of that by working on your, you know, improvement areas. If they are very, very foundational in nature or core in nature, like in my case, it was listening. Uh, otherwise, you know, like. You know, if you see my strength being self-assured, strategic thinker, communicator, positive, those, it, it this this aspect of listening has really, you know, acted as a catalyst uh, to that and has really helped to, to create a bigger impact uh, for me. So I feel you, you need to see, uh, you know, comprehensively. And uh, truly believe in your strength and uh, you can really overcome your uh, shortcomings or improvement areas. If you truly, you know, demonstrate your strength and, uh, you know, talk about it freely. So I feel uh, strength is a way to go, uh, but don't ignore your uh, blind spots. Be aware of that. And if those blind spots are derailers, kindly act on it as well. Very well said. Uh, Jim, uh... I'm sure you would have noticed one important thing that uh, Manoj mentioned that uh, it allows you to lead stress free. Your your take on that uh, from so much of experience uh, before we move on to the last section. Yeah, well, I, I did want to make a comment that I, 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 too, was a poor listener in doing this job made me better <laughs> because I had to listen. Right. I couldn't you can't just, you can't do you can't interview people if you're not spending time listening to them. And, uh, and so it took some, it took some real practice, um, to do that. I do want to ask you this question, um, a real quick managers. We've seen some of the worst engagement scores among managers. They're just getting, you know, it's just right now, it's a particularly difficult job. What are you doing or how are you helping managers, um, uh, to, to do the, the difficult jobs, they, that they have to do with people. What, what are you seeing out there and how are you helping them? I feel, uh, you know, uh, every successful person, you know, is successful 
on account of he or she is being coached or mentored in life you know and uh, like people who are not uh, that great people managers or people leaders i think it is it is your prime responsibility to sit with them and enable them and uh, uh, last 25 years la i think from 2000 1998 onwards uh, i have significant part of uh, my time has gone into addressing that uh, in whatever capacity i have been associated with various organization and that is uh, you have to sit with them make them understand how important the role of uh, uh, you know these uh, questions in your life is how important it is for you to overcome them you know and it is very easy it's not something like uh, you are asking you know somebody ki like you are you know right hander start doing things by your left hand it's not like that it's just enablement and it is a continuous i would say uh, enablement to various uh, people so that they they tend to start working towards that and i have seen many people many people have changed uh, if you really sit with them have a very clinical discussion explain the merits and demerits of it in addition we have also like uh, many in, uh, occasions i have experimented people who are in the top side of uh, their q12 scores and very you know tall leaders with respect to their uh, q12 scores the case studies you know it is good to share the success stories of them what they do differently you know why their team members are so thriving and wh what is happening on the other side of it i think that uh, success stories people relate a lot so uh, one should really you know try that bit as well thirdly i think there is good good very uh, simple literature is available on platform like gallup access where people can have been pointed action plan on 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 a particular you know aspect of their leadership i think uh, they can go uh, you know little bit uh, clinical in terms of addressing and if it is backed by the organization support in terms of sitting with them and enabling them and you know organizing sessions with them they can overcome uh, you know that particular aspect of their their leadership trait yes it is it is it takes time but if you focus it and if the if there is a volunteerism from the individual you can crack it and uh, so it, it, it is yes it is it is very much an important aspect for the comprehensive success of the organization because not everyone in the organization operates at the uh, 4.5 uh, levels and above mm -hmm. you know there are varieties of uh, you know uh, people and always 20 to 25% people you will find on the on the left side of the uh, <laughs> curve but it is but they may be extremely good in their uh, you know domain but from the people results point of view i think you need to enable them and it is it is the prime responsibility of the of the people managers and the uh, leaders to enable them i tell you i'll quote one more example here we have initiated something called gurukul in art industries we call it gurukul a gurukul is a hindi word where you know it's more like a you know mentoring uh, gym for you mm -hmm. where in all leaders have own 4 to 6 leaders so leaders creating leaders mm. and it's a one year program wherein they actually you know tutored or you know sensitized and uh, kind of taken through the whole one year of journey to really overcome their barriers or you know and uh, re really you know change their default Uh, from the uh, leadership perspective or the people results perspective so you know it is that kind of you know if you take such very structured initiatives possibilities are there and i am a true believer of people are possibilities mm -hmm. they are not the people you know if you invest in them they will show the results 
so i am a true believer in that <laughs> thank you and this was very very insightful and before you know a quick follow up to this is which is why gallup uh, you know has been trans, you know we have something which we call as more transitioning from a boss to a coach because now employees are expecting their managers to be more coach like than be a boss like because you expect your you know manager to solve even your personal problem right and and does play the role of a coach or a mentor so you know uh, manoj it has been wonderful you know listening to you rather you know from our end but now we have a few lovely questions from the audience that has come up so we'll take the first question uh which just come from rachna uh rachna says that how do you manage your feedback or action especially if, if the team member isn't performing up to the mark uh i think it's a very 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 relevant question uh, posed by rachna so manoj your thoughts on that thanks thanks rachna i think very very powerful question uh and how do i do this is being authentic to that individual and uh, that that authentic aspect is very very important when you provide a, a brutal feedback especially things like when the individual is not meeting up to the expectations so you do a good justice uh, to that individual if you provide that authentic feedback ensure that individual is not doomed or uh, you know uh, uh, so there has this is some aspect of an art as well you know how do you provide that authentic uh, feedback or a brutal feedback in a manner the individual moves and take actions rather than feels doomed about it so uh, and it it's not a one sitting or a two sitting it takes little prolonged effort and a little hand holding ensure create a sense that you are standing for his or her success if you if you can do that you know if in a in a very authentic and very simple manner ki you are standing for that individual success anything is possible in terms of communicating even if if it comes to ki you are not really catching up and you are not meeting up to the expectations and and i think the people uh, or, or 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 the all the tall leaders they do it very very successfully this aspect you know they never shy away in terms of providing uh, feedback i have received many such feedbacks in my life i i tell you and that has really helped me whatever i am today you know so you need to create that sense brutal feedback is not for you know uh, making you or taking you out of the business or out of your career it is like enabling you in a manner ki yes this is required to be done and this is needed so you are doing a great uh, you know justice in the life of the individual if you remain authentic and uh, be straight in terms of providing that brutal feedback ensure the individual doesn't feel uh, doomed feelings are facts in a gallup world so make sure uh, the individual is taking uh, those actions and it has to be actionable it it should not be generalist kind of a comment you know your feedback needs to be actionable so uh, i think the individual who provides such feedback they also need to do certain amount of uh, homework and uh, you know before really getting into those dialogue discussions thank you rachna no. great question yes uh, we have another question which has come from kiran who asks you what is your strength to be continuously motivated how do you practice this it's a very <laughs> the self motivation is something which is very much needed right you know uh, and i was i was speaking to actually a, a friend of mine who was doing a phd and uh, he was telling me that you know phd is an exercise in self motivation every day right uh, so, so it's a relevant uh, question your yeah thoughts. kiran to me you know that is the only thing is under your control you know and i i feel you need to keep your locus of control internal you can do anything you know that is how i see myself you know uh, you have to have you have to be extremely conscious about your self talk you know and i am very very mindful of of my self talk 
if my self talks are largely optimistic and uh, you know i i'm i'm a true believe, believer of yes i can make things happen i can bring results and uh, so my self talk is around that it keeps me healthy it keeps my mind agile it keeps me in, you know looking forward in life so uh, i i am not you know i do reflect you know what is not working well but i am not consumed by any pessimistic thought so by nature i am little optimistic i would not not say little i am really optimistic i am extremely self assured i truly believe in my strength and uh, and self assured is one you know which gives me a lot of energy and uh, motivation to move forward and so it's it's all within i didn't understand that it's all within thank you manoj and if i have a lot of questions but we'll take a couple of them before we end and uh, i'll combine aditya and jitesh's question together uh they want to know is how are you managing it's a very nice question actually aditya's question uh how are you managing the engagement level of employees from different generations because each generation has different requirements right and jitesh follows it up with a question around you know how do you encourage a culture of accountability and responsibility amongst your employees so with do these two questions you know we will we'll, we'll get your inputs and then then we'll let jim take over i think uh, uh, you need to accept today's organization is of multi generations and multi diversity you know none of the organization and it should not be uh, i i feel uh, your in your leadership you need to have uh, armory which suits the requirement of var- various generations you know so when when you interact with uh, people who are in the gen x category or when you interact with people who are in millennial category i think uh, you need to you can convey the same thing but your style could could be different you know of uh, communicating that so uh, so that awareness is very very important you know uh, when you are communicating or when you are uh, you know being part of uh, their the discussion i think uh, it depends uh, when when you are with the people who are in the gen x and baby movers and all that you need to have a different leadership style of communicating the same uh, result and when you are with millennials or gen gen z you you need to have a different communicating style you need to be more friendly you need to be more i would say uh, open you and you need to be seen as one amongst them i think uh, when when you are seen as one amongst them lot of things are possible and uh, i feel that has never been a issue for me personally Uh, of uh, catching up with uh, any i would say generations of people uh, you need to have that art of developing that chemistry with them i think when you, when you when you be more self aware and when you know what's the task ahead of you 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 go at, get those vibes you know how to really communicate and convey and be seen as one amongst them so aditya that is what uh, as of now comes to my mind and you can touch base with me for more detailed discussions on this and when it comes to jitesh i think uh, jitesh talk about accountability and all that i think that's a great question on accountability it has to be a continuous endeavor and it has to be it has to be done religiously something you know i would say when you are bringing a culture of ownership and accountability you you cannot be compromising on any aspect of it when you, like in arti you know we have taken uh, our kind of you know uh, creating a accountability culture we have trained our people dd on how to hold people to account and we have also trained how to get you you know if somebody hold you to account what you have to do so you you have to really orient your people when you are when your intent is developing certain sort of a culture 
you know whether ownership culture or accountability culture so uh, invest uh, in terms of enabling your people and explain the whole process how to go about it when when i hold somebody to account you know there is a formal procedure we have listed it down when somebody holds you to account there is a procedure listed by us because it is something new which we are trying to bring in so you have to provide a whole uh, i would say steps to that so that people can practice and practice then becomes habit and habit becomes culture so it's a, it's a long mm-hmm. round process but you ha- you have to do it in a very very clinical and uh, theoretical manner so that's what just Tesh comes to my mind. <laughs> I, I think, you know, Manoj, I've been doing this for a long time now and Jim has been doing it for a longer, longer time. Uh, <laughs> practice becomes habit and habit becomes culture. I don't think we have a better way to end this, <laughs> uh, you know, as, as we talk about engagement and culture. Jim, I think uh, it has been a, one of my best experiences today, um, you know, having this, you know, discussion with you and Manoj. So, um, all, all, all over to you to to take the next part and you know end this show. Thank yeah, you. you bet. And I'm an Xer, but I I tell people I want I'm the oldest millennial you'll ever meet because I want all the same things. And, and, and you're right. Uh, we we've just all got to kind of blend it together um, uh, to make it work. Manoj, thank you for for your insight. I will tell Mark, my editor, make sure he pulls that out. We'll make it a pull quote and we'll put that in the show notes uh, and make sure that's very prominent. Uh, because I do like that. I think those are some great steps. Well, we'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources. When I was mentioned this a little bit earlier at Gallup Access, go to gallup.com slash Clifton Strengths. You can sign in there and get access to Gallup Access there. For coaching, master coaching, or if you want to become a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, just send us an email, coaching at gallup.com. Stay up to date with all future webcasts just like this one. And by the way, this blew out all the records that we've ever done in India. Uh, tonight about 140 live uh, which is super cool but you yes. can follow us gallup.eventbrite.com join us for the 2023 gallup at work summit we have both virtual and in-person options available there check out all the details not too late uh, but at gallup at work.com find us on all the social platforms just by searching clifton strengths we want to thank you for joining us today for this special webcast and we thanks for coming out Uh, If you listen live, especially thanks for coming out. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.